I'm joined by Chris Thomas, uh, Minister for Policy and Reform, and we're talking about uh, greenfield sites and the brownfield sites, more importantly. Uh, this came up in Tim Ward this month, uh, but it's been ongoing. I mean, you've always there's been a policy for a long time, I think, like, maybe I know, 10 years or something. Yeah. Um, but you've updated it anyway. It's just generally, can you yeah. tell us what's in and what's out? I mean, mm -hmm. developing on brownfield sites seems the logical yeah. thing. But it makes no sense whatsoever. Nobody wants to leave brownfield sites fallow. Mm. You know. There might be a, a good space for a few cars to park, but what's really the point of that? Wouldn't it be better to have houses on some of them? Wouldn't it be better to have leisure facilities on some of them? And so on and so on. Moreover, nobody really wants to use any greenfield sites unless you have to, because we've got a great countryside in here. So for 10 years, perhaps even longer, perhaps back to the 1980s, uh, when Summerland's been in, uh, mm. been in scope, um, Lord Street's been in scope. And oh, well, so Lord on. Street is one that I think we always <laughs> think about, that <coughs> demolishing there. Uh, yeah, left. Yeah, but, you know, basically, what do we do about it? And what we have to do about it is we have to change the demand and change the economics of those brownfield sites and that's pretty tricky you know we have to have enough people here who want to live in towns or use towns for what they do in their everyday lives to actually make it sense to make sense for people to spend money on it and it's very hard to do that how, how do you do, do it? it so first of all you make sure that there's no impediments from planning and I think that's where we are now and with the area plan for the east that's been going on in parallel to what's been going on in Tim Wood, we've now got a clear message from the independent inspector who's given um, his recommendations to Cabinet Office for the next stage of the East Area, Area Plan, and we'll come to that in a moment, mm -hmm. that we should be trying to make sure that we get to the stage where we can treat these areas comprehensively so we can use compulsory purchase if we have to, but most importantly, um, let's see if we can make sure that there really are no planning impediments. So it comes down to then to making sure that other government policies are right. Is there anything we can do financially, either as a cat, as a mm -hmm. carrot, or mm -hmm. as a stick? to encourage investment in those um, sites. And is that things well, you do? We, we, perhaps with tax policy, perhaps with the way we modernise rates, perhaps with what we call community infrastructure levy. Mm -hmm. But I think it all comes back from a financial point of view is we've got to have people to want to use their town centres either to live in or to work in or to actually exercise their le leisure time if they live somewhere else. And so it's about building a, a buzz around uh, the Douglas hmm. and, but then and again, the brownfield sites will get used. I mean, we don't have brownfield sites in St Helier and so on. Right. And that's the sort of uh, atmosphere we want to create. But I mean, just surely about building in, in Douglas, I mean, you've got to make sure there's parking provisions and all those sort of things. Whereas out in the greenfield sites, it's so much simpler, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's, there's more pressure maybe on planning on a brownfield site than there just is. taking a brand new site. There is, you know, because of the way that the, you, you can't put new roads into Douglas because there's not enough space. You can't, uh, it's pretty difficult to park people on the roads, but ultimately it makes no sense whatsoever to have just one layer of parking on ground level. If you need parking, why not integrate it into larger size buildings? And that's what planning policy encourages or at least allows. So if, from a planning point of view, we've got to get the finances right, which involves getting the people right. We need an enterprise department, making sure that people don't have to leave the island because they've got good careers and jobs here on the island, making sure that the extra vacancies we've got in highly skilled professions, high paying, and attract new people to come to the island and fall in love with it like I did. Um, so it's, it's got that element to it. We also need to think through about um, housing policy, for instance. Um, uh, at the moment we require all developments over eight units to have 25% of affordable homes. Mm. You know, that's been questioned by the recent development agency uh, consultants that we had, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Parking in, in itself, you know, d we need to have new ideas about, um, about parking. So it's pretty difficult. Um, it has been suggested as well that we should make um, building in greenfield sites less attractive, make it more expensive, make them contribute more. And that's an idea that's, um, that certainly some members of the House of Keys and Tim Wilder are, are focused on. But is that fair? Is it fair to take away some of the, uh, mm -hmm. some of the, um, some of the benefits from, um, from developing fields? Anyhow, that's on the, uh, that's on the, um, on the, um, on the table. Uh, but you know, the population you keep saying is going to go up, they're going to need more places and houses, but mm -hmm. that's always questioned. It keeps getting questioned and it did get in Tim Wilder. Are you still confident that we're well, going up? Well, this last 12 months, uh, the, the population has grown uh, by, three, uh, by 300. 400 people have uh, come here. Where do you get those figures exactly? How from you know uh, GP statistics, and so they're quite accurate at the moment. They could be we, ghosts, though. We're just for ghosts. We, okay. take, out, we take out about 2,000 of the people on the GPs because really? they're ghosts, and we're constantly improving how we estimate for ghosts. So those figures are getting better. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the basic problem is the Isle of Man hasn't got a buzz about it. People are not seeing those brownfield sites and the age 
population as an opportunity when they're younger, but they really are, aren't they? So you're going to be able to fast track a bit, the planners are going to get more relaxed about it? Yeah, they are. So around the town centres, we've allowed permitted development to change uses along Strand Street and in the other in the town centres. Uh, and what about the fast food outlets on Peel Road? Was that some part that, of that as well? That's what's called a comprehensive treatment area in the area plan for the east, likewise with Market Street, likewise with uh, Villiers Square, likewise with all along the South Quay. So they're comprehensive treatment areas. So for the first year after the area plan for the east comes into effect, we'll be able to make bold, do, to, to do bold things inside the planning law, um, right. inside those areas, join people together to make Some them work together. Some people might be together. worried about this, though, you know, fast tracking and uh, they, getting they, incentives yeah. and you know, all those things that can make people go, hmm, that's the rich getting richer by sounds of it. Well, it, it could be, but that's where planning comes in and that's where and that's where politicians come in. We've got to make sure that everything's balanced so the plan actually stands up for the environment. You know, our plan is called a sustainable island and there's a policy in there that says the countryside should be protected, the environment should be protected this, for its own sake. This policy has been going like 10 years, you say, whatever. Yeah. Has it had any positive effects so far? I mean, you're tweaking it again, so yeah. clearly there must be... Things aren't, aren't yeah, well it ha setting yeah, it things alight. It, clearly, it clearly hasn't worked, no. but the way I see it is when you look at uh, Villiers Square now, it does look as if something's going on when you uh, look through the windows. Now and so there's on. a long story. And, then, and when you go to South Quay, you know, planning permission has just been given for a, controversially for quite a big building with, um, with, a, with, 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 with shops, restaurants and mm. so on on the ground floor and flats above. There are big plans for Lord Street. The, the independent inspector's just given advice about the area plan for the east to Cabinet Office, which will now be taking into account um, before we consult on the final version of the plan, I hope, su such that we can take the area plan for the east to Timwald for approval before the summer recess, you know, within s six or seven months. And what the uh, planning inspector said in part was that, um, was that uh, we, uh, we really needed to make up our minds where we needed the primary school in Onken and where we needed the primary school in Douglas Central because we can't have a piece of land that's sterilised because we can't make up our mind whether it, it can be used for housing or whether we need to keep it for a school. Um, that's the case in Central Douglas and in Onken we have to make up our minds where we're going to put the, the Onken Primary School because there's no point filling the village up, having lots of people living there and then have, having forgotten to put a new primary school in the plans. So the, the, the planning inspector said make up your minds, government's got to have a policy on what's okay. going to happen to these things. Well we've got obviously lots to talk about here so we'll have a, a part two of this interview.